Honourable Member for Viewfort South. Madam Speaker, I understand that we are looking at the resolution which in essence requests Parliament to approve a sum of EC 103 million for financing the 2017-2018 budget and a sum of $262 million for refinancing the existing debts on the regional government securities market or through private placements at a maximum rate of 7.5%. At the outset, Madam Speaker, I want to admit, of course, that I understand full well the desire of any Minister of Finance, having just passed the budget, to try and get approval for all borrowings up front, either during or immediately after, so that you don't have a recurring decimal of constant resolutions before the House in the course of the year requesting approval for borrowing. I mean, certainly this is a procedure that has been employed in the past before, and one understands perfectly why this would be the case even on this occasion. However, Madam Speaker, I am very mystified by the resolution that is before the House this morning. It is an unusually crafted resolution, and to be frank, Madam Speaker, I am not even sure in my mind <coughs> that the correct procedures have been employed in presenting this resolution to the Honorable House. You see, Madam Speaker, <clears throat> we seem to be dealing with borrowing from two different sources. And it would be necessary for the Minister of Finance to clarify exactly how he is pro proceeding because of the sums of money that are involved here. On the one hand, the Minister of Finance cites the National Savings and Development Bonds Act and indicates that there will be some borrowing, but we are not told precisely what is the amount that will be protected, be allowed under the National Savings and Development Bonds Act. Then in paragraph B it says a sum of EC 262 million for refinancing the existing debts on the regional government securities market or through private placements at a maximum, maximum rate of 7.5%. There are two kinds of instruments that may be placed before the RGSM. The first is the usual treasury bills. And then of course you can seek to finance bonds placed on the RGSM. Here again, we are not being told what amount of money is going to be raised by way of treasury bills, what amount of money is going to be raised by way of funds. This becomes crucial because then we are dealing with the issue of interest rates. If you are raising money by way of treasury bills, then very clearly, there's a certain interest rate that will apply to treasury bills. If you are going to raise money by way of bonds, then if you are going to go by way of bonds of a certain duration, whether it is short term or long term bonds, there's going to be a certain interest rate that is applicable. But the mystery continues because, Madam Speaker, if the intention is that all this money is going to be raised under the National Savings and Development Bonds Act because it is cited, I note, in paragraphs 1 and 2, then the Minister of Finance must perforce clarify what amount of money is really being raised under the National Savings and Development Bonds Act because there is a ceiling. You can only borrow up to 1.8 
billion dollars. Therefore, the question is, what is the current ceiling? How much we have outstanding in bonds? And secondly, if both amounts are to be protected under the National Savings Development Bonds Act, then would the existing ceiling be able to accommodate both instruments? So there must be frank and full disclosure of precisely what room you have to maneuver under the National Savings and Development Bonds Act. One would have thought that precisely because two different kinds of legislation authorizes two different kinds of interventions that the Minister of Finance would have made it absolutely clear in a resolution before the House what amount is coming from national savings development bonds, what amount is coming under Treasury bills. There is a further implication and I'm not so sure and I will not offer any opinion on this question now for a variety of reasons. Whether even if you borrow, borrow under the National Savings Development Bonds Act and you enter into agreements with specific banks or institutions or individuals as to how much you are borrowing, whether you don't have to come back to the house in respect of those specific instruments because you'll be borrowing at specific rates of interest. Or unless, of course, you have a generous investor who says, well, I'm going to take all your debt. Buy all your debt. <coughs> and the rate of interest is 7.5%. So I would hope that we get some clarification of this because this instrument is ill-advised as it is drafted. I will say no more on this. I mean, at this stage, because, as I said, we are dealing with two very different species. But what is causing me some concern is a lack of, of clarity in respect of interest rates. Madam Speaker, this resolution clearly suggests that St. Lucia has to make its instruments available in the marketplace. But there are some very interesting things that are happening on the RGSM. St. Lucia is in a peculiar position because a lot of its debt is actually debt on the RGSM contrary to what most people think. And precisely because you are dealing with a lot of that debt on the RGSM, it is always more difficult to engage in any kind of renegotiation regarding that specific debt. <coughs> but the trends that we are seeing today are not trends that happen today alone, but they are some ominous signals. Because having managed an economy in the last few years, and having experienced the pressures that were exerted on St. Lucia in the last few years, it is even more critical and crucial that we understand the vulnerabilities we are dealing with at this time. The fact of the matter is that St. Lucia is attracting the highest rates of interest for instruments, for its instruments on, the, on the RGSM. Now, there is both a positive and a negative side to this. At first glance, an investor, including an ordinary St. Lucia, would want to buy the instruments of the government of St. Lucia, your treasury bills, because it is offering an interest rate of 6%. After all, Banks are not offering that kind of interest rate, so you might as well invest in government securities. That's a short-term benefit. The long-term issue and the underlying structural issue is that 
your instruments are attracting higher rates of interest because your economy is under stress. And let us look at some of these placements to grasp the significance of this. The government of St. Lucia Treasury Bill issued on the 28th of June, 25 million. The real interest suggested to the market maximum 60% for 180 days. The government of Antigua issues treasury bills for maximum 15 million. The rate of interest proposed by Antigua for treasury bills of 365 days, 5.5%. And bearing in mind that this is an economy that came out of a partial form of structural adjustment and it seems well on its way to be facing further stresses. The government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, they went to the market for $28 million, interest rate 4.82%, 91 days treasury bills. The government of the Commonwealth of Dominica, they too went to the market, 20 million, and the interest rate 6%. The government of Grenada now on a structural adjustment program and they have had more room to maneuver to deal with their debt for the simple reason most of their debt was external or externally incurred. They are going to the market for 10 million only at an interest rate of 4%. So what do we see here? We are seeing a pattern that the economies that are under stress are selling their instruments at the highest rates of interest on our RGSM. That's a warning signal. That is a warning signal. And the question which the Minister of Finance has to answer, what advice do you give investors in that kind of environment? What do you tell your investors? What explanations are you going to tell them? Well, you know, we are offering higher rates of interest because we can afford it. Is that the advice? Or, on the other hand, some investors more discerning say, look, 6%, I better be careful down the road. That's the issue. It now becomes an issue of confidence in respect of the financial system. Madam Speaker, there was, I thought, a statement by the Minister of Finance in his budget presentation that on the face of it looked rather innocuous. I thought it was a very unusual statement for the Minister of Finance to make. And it's at page 38 of his budget speech now part of the record of this house. He says, quote, Madam Speaker, to solve the debt problem, we will have to do our fair share as a government and as a people. We cannot do it alone. To restore the public finances, we must recognize that our fiscal stability is a shared interest for all stakeholders in our economy. <clears throat> we will have to act in partnership with the private sector and with our bilateral and multilateral stakeholders. The burden of adjustment will have to be shared by all. Over the next few months, we plan to announce several initiatives which we believe are necessary to place our debt on a sustainable path. This is a very interesting and surprising statement. As I said, unless you read the budget very carefully, you may not have picked up the implications or the nuances of that statement. The question is, why would the Minister of Finance 
make a statement like this when he knows he has to go to the marketplace? What is the hidden message contained in that statement? What are you telling investors who wish to purchase government instruments, government bonds, government securities? What are you telling them? Are you telling them that down the road they may face the possibility of a haircut or are you telling them down the road that they may have to face the possibility of renegotiation of their government instruments? What are you telling them? And why would you want to say that at this time? What are you to tell someone who comes to you for advice and say, I have a million dollars, I want to buy government treasury <coughs> bills, or I want to buy bonds, should I go ahead? What do you tell them? You can tell them, these are the market conditions, these are the interest rates that are available, these are the interest rates that are applicable, but you should be careful and be aware of the statement made by the Minister of Finance that sometime in this budgetary cycle there will be negotiations in respect of outstanding debt to the government's illusion. That is what the advisor may have to offer by way of advice. The fact of the matter is, Madam Speaker, as I have indicated, on the one hand, it may appear attractive to buy instruments at the rate of of 6% because it is the highest rate being offered, certainly far higher than our counterparts in the rest of the region. But it begs the question, why is it that St. Lucia's instruments are attracting such high rates of interest? Why? Clearly, this is a portfolio that will have to be handled with extraordinary care and sensitivity as we proceed in this coming budgetary cycle. And very clearly, what we choose to say is going to be vital as we manage that <coughs> portfolio in the weeks and months ahead. In summary, therefore, Madam Speaker, I seek answers to the following questions. Whether legally you can proceed to borrow sums of money from two government acts in one resolution without reference to specific acts and the amount of money being raised under each act. Whether you can do this. Secondly, whether you can proceed to ask Parliament for its blessing in an open-ended manner, notwithstanding the fact that certainly in respect of the National Savings Development Bonds Act, you have greater room to maneuver. There's no question, because there's a two-stage process. The first is that the National Development Savings Bond Act must establish a ceiling for you to borrow. And once you indicate you are issuing bonds under that, then the second stage applies. The borrowing and the rates of interest have to be clarified, especially if you are engaged in borrowing for long-term instruments. That is the, the, the second issue that has to be clarified. And the third issue, why is it? that St. Lucia is attracting at this stage such a high rate of interest and for how long are we to expect those rates of interest will continue to apply. Madam Speaker, I thank you and see no more.